Hi everyone, welcome back to the Get A Breed channel. So today we are at Whitewater Brewery in Castle Wellen. Probably the largest brewery in the north of Ireland and um, husband and wife team with Bernard and Kerry. And we want to take you inside, show you around the brewery and get to know a little bit about the brand and see what they do behind the walls of this beautiful building. Come on. Bernard's kindly taking us on a tour around his brewery and as you can come in here to the main brew house. This is Tank Farm? Yeah. Yeah, it's all the brewing and conditioning end of things. Okay, so brewing and conditioning, um, production then, hot side productions over this side? Yeah. Yeah. And it's a 65 hectolitre brew length. That's right, yeah. yeah. Plus we also have a little uh, 20 hectolitre plant that we still, do our, we yeah. still do our trials on and, yeah. and in addition to the 70 litre plant. Yeah. <laughs> So 70, 70 to 2,000 up to 60, six and a half thousand litres, yeah. Okay. Can we get a look at the production side first? Yeah, certainly. And then work through it. So you start mill, milling in, in the mill room here, augers into the mash tun, and then is it gravity fed down to a kettle? That's it, yeah, so yeah, that's it, correct. So we've come up onto the first floor production platform. Bernard's just taking us in and showing us brand new mill. You can see that there's malt stored in this area. Obviously, we're, we're very grateful for the support that we get for the malt here. So the malt comes in whole, it's crushed. You're doing grist analysis, ensuring that you're getting the best extract out of the malt. It then comes out through the wall and uggered into the mash tun here. So you can see here that there's wedge wire in the bottom. So, and then spray ball on the top here for sparging. So this, how do you evacuate the mash tun? It's a manual digger. Man manual, oh, yeah. right, okay. Yeah. Keeps the guys fit then. So, uh, so we're starting the project yeah. now for uh, spank grain removal. Okay, and then um, that'll be vacuumed out or hoovered yeah, out. Yeah, it'll, it'll go out and then that's straight straight away off the site straight yeah. into the the hungry cows down the road. And is this the whole? This was this water? was our old mash tun. This is the the mash tun that we built back in 1997, or right, just okay. a year about a year after we started. In fact, it, what this was a. Uh, this was probably was the original tank, and then I had a couple of modifications done to it. So okay. that's twenty-five year old. Yeah, very An good. An old uh, tank from a, a carpet factory in in Downpatrick. It's that it's, was closing. Yeah, wearing well. And it hasn't it hasn't been used in many many a year. We've went through milling um, into the mashing, into yeah. the mashing. You're and sparging yeah, here, sparging here, and then have you your kettle down below? Yeah, kettle's just gravity fed down below us. The main kettle so here. The main kettle here. Gas fired now. Uh, yeah, well, I designed up um, an external work board myself. Okay. So we just use that with an external uh, steam heated calandria. Okay. And, uh, and then it just goes on. When it, when it gets to the boil then, we switch off our pumping and we just thermosiphon the whole way through the boil. Okay. So it's a wee bit of something unique again, something that's, uh, that was, it wasn't a reinventing the wheel, but I've seen this done before and uh, I'm a great tinkerer at things and yeah. rather than getting somebody in to do it, we'll get the welders in and a wee bit of, yeah. wee bit of knowledge is dangerous. But yeah, yeah. it's, it's uh, and it does well, I mean it does heat well, it heats very quickly. Once we settle out, we, we uh, high power pump onto that, we spin it and then we let it settle and it's okay. then pretty fast then it's off the... And does it go through plate chillers then yeah. before it goes to the fermentation vessel? Yeah. We can trim it down pretty much where we need to be and then straight into any one of the uh, these six uh, FVs or okay. an FV at the far side as well there and we just we installed there back in February. Do you do double batch brewing into the larger vessels to fill them or is that for bright only? Or? That generally becomes uh, bright only. Bright only. And that's okay. into, into the, the 150 hectare tanks. Uh, it, it really depends on how production's going. If we have yeah. um, a large order that requires a couple of brews then we have done into that in the past yeah. but we prefer to just do it batches into into the, the dedicated FVs themselves. How many oh. different styles are you bring? Well, I mean, yes, we're all, we're probably doing about I mean, three or four or five different beer styles at the moment. Yeah. Uh, a few more coming along as well. Yeah. Just getting the time to, to do a wee bit of new products this past, okay. I suppose over lockdown, everybody sits and thinks of what they want to do. And the times that they didn't have when they're on the conveyor belt, and you have a bit of a chance to sit down and see what you want to do. So we're doing that at the moment. We're still, uh, we're still, uh, just reinventing a few things as well. Yeah. Got the projects that I mentioned, so. 
like one thing I would say that I like about whitewater beers is it's it's consistent, and and we would we would tell people this all the time when it comes to brewing, consistency is key to success. You know. Yeah. So, is there anything that you would say is a key part of equipment to have in here? Would it be you know? Is it the recipe? Is it the water profile? Is it the centrifuge? Or is it a little bit of them all? I think it's a, it's a little bit of it all. But I mean, my, my background and kind of an engineer, it's, it's the analytical side of things and getting the best equipment to go in to sort of see that will give us consistency. You touched on that. Yeah, we, we put our centrifuge in. You know, we'll have our centrifuge in pretty close to eight or nine years now. Yeah. And, you know, we're also looking at, you know, we've always done things, with, you know, Things that are expensive that maybe whenever we were starting out in 1996 that we wouldn't have done. We you know we didn't have a, a DO meter back in 1996. Yeah, yeah. So, but you know, you, when you enter that game, once you put your head above the power pit and some things, you yeah. have to spend the money in that. Yeah. And that is key to it. It's looking at the most point making you know good cooling system. You know, making sure you can chill your beers right down to to, to zero degrees or, or below you know minus yeah, one degree, go, whatever yeah. we need to get to. You know, you put a little bit of that. Put a, a, you know, a good firm, a good fermentation vessel, uh, everything right down to the how we move our beers and how we pump our beers and how you know if, we, if we're not using gas, we're trying to use things that that, that, that don't harm the product. So yeah. it's all all those little things put together. Sometimes we don't get it always right that way, but that's the, yeah. the plan is that we that we do things like that. You know, yeah. we we're, we're not cutting the corners. You just use these for contract packaging, do you? These vessels here. Yeah, we we use those for. Um, we use them for kegging, right, okay. and we can use them for bottling as well. We see, obviously, the demands cans. It seems to be going yeah. that way. Um, is it worth your while investing in another new bottling line whenever the the, the numbers aren't going up yeah. at the same rate? Yeah, Johnny, I've sat on that one, and there's days I spin the coin and, and think about it, but um, I think ultimately we will go can. I think this part of the UK has been the slowest, lowest yeah, place there, to There's to still a demand it. in Northern Ireland yeah, for, glass for, bottles. for glass bottles. Yeah. And in some of the foreign markets as well. Like, I mean, we are not in many foreign markets, but the ones that we're in are preferring the, the bottles, and I do try and ship them along a little bit in cans. Yeah. Now, yes, it gives us the opportunity to do things like, like I was discussing earlier, like nitro cans. Yeah. And uh, obviously, that's not limiting the self into a bottle, but yeah. um, I wouldn't. I wouldn't stick down and, and now invest a couple of hundred thousand pounds in the bottling line at the moment. Yeah. Although I would love to have the speed. You'd love the speed, yeah. No, that's understandable. So look, just for the, the guys looking, there's uh, fermentation vessels here. These are cylindrical, conical, pressurized vessels with cooling loops built into them, all running probably off a big glycol bank. Yeah, yeah. sitting up a glycol tank outside. We've got a, a 50 hectoliter glycol tank sitting at around about minus two degrees. Yeah, and then bright tanks and uh, centrifuge vessel here. Just take us through what's that on the back wall. On the back the, wall, that yeah. is our, uh, it's our pasteurizer, which we, which we use for, for, for kids. Okay, in the packaging's over this area, so we'll go and take a little bit of a look at, at that and see what's over there. Just to give the guys a view of what's going on here, you have multiple packaging lines, so you have uh, a bottle filling line on the left here. Is this two cannon lines running? Yeah, yeah. absolutely. So, so we have a bottling line, then we're, we're, we're We've got two canning lines um, directly paralleled up, yeah. and uh, go straight through then, go through uh, either be it a can warmer or pasteurizer, depending on what we're doing with it. Okay. But we're packaging the beers at around about you know one degree C. Okay. And uh, we can we can pasteurize through the tunnel if we want, and then straight through into the labeler. Okay. Yeah. So it's pretty much a, a kind of a semi-automatic process. Yeah. Uh, you know, manual infeed into 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 the tray. We don't have a a really nice 50k depalletizer yeah, for yeah, our yeah. can line. Yeah. Um, so, so we you just have work, to. You're working hard. Like yeah. you can see, the guys are working hard. Yeah. You know, uh, it's it it's needs must. Well, obviously, you're the only local brewer that has a pasteurization tunnel. Yeah. Um, maybe our viewers don't understand this, but this brings a lot of benefits for shelf stability for export. So, has that been a good addition to the? It has. It's, it's, it's something that has allowed us to to uh, it opens up the products that we can do here as well. Yeah. I mean, last year we we uh, we went into the hard seltzer market that we've been working at since 2019. Yeah. So we went went onto the market, but also there it gives us other 250 mil or kind of products that we can do in here that may be alcoholic or non-alcoholic, um, especially with low alcohol products. 
you really do need that degree of stability because yeah. alcohol is not in the, in the other it's not there to to, to protect to, to the protect beer. the beer yeah. so uh, a tunnel has been it's something that you know we started in 1996 yeah. and we installed one in 2021 so we got a good few years before putting one in and yeah. i always you know thought would i do this sat in the fence with it but we we actually think it's a fantastic way because you know, there's some of the things which we previously maybe we were, you know, everybody was sterile filtering beer years ago for, for, for foreign markets and for, and for keg markets. This here gives us the ability in terms of, of a very, very low PUs and from the flavour, I think it's fantastic from, yeah. from the flavour. Yeah. Yes, you can you can take it and do wrong things with it, but yeah. I think we're, 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 we've it trimmed down now. Gavin here working on it especially has it running very sweet at the moment and um, it's, it's good. Really There's is. certain things that people would be critical of due to a lack of information out there in the brewing scene. For example, centrifuges. You used to package beer for me. I noticed a dramatic improvement in our beer when it came out of the packaging here because it was centrifuge. Yeah. I thought that allowed some flavours to really shine. Yeah. As although there'd be a misconception that that strips flavour out. And it's the Absolutely. same with pasteurisation. Yeah. You know, it is possible to make that. It is, beer, and I know. think I think one of the big things that I would have to qualify in that is is oxygen, yeah. because you can buy a centrifuge, you can run a centrifuge, but a lot of people maybe things get bad press if, if they're not run correctly, yeah. and if you maybe were to use that as a, as a in a wrong way, you could maybe have air introduced into your product, or yeah. you could you could have a product that spoils. Then you take that product, and maybe you are going through pasteurization. If you are yeah. going through pasteurization with any air. Again, you're 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 leaving yourself wide open for flavor degradation. Yeah. So I think what we've done here is to try and is work work introduce some things that maybe, as you say, maybe there's a, there's a lack of knowledge. I'm never going to cut it so that the products are coming out of here less than the, the, the way I want them. Yeah. And the guys know that we're all like that here. You know, yeah. we've, we've, we've we have a sleepless night or something's not right. And yeah, I think yeah. that's that's. That's, that's a really good thing here. Like, I mean, Gavin here has been with me now for 20 odd years, you know? Yeah. Well, that's a credit to you and Kerry that he's, you yeah, know. Yeah, I mean, and Gavin, yeah. well, and, and as people like that, that we're, you know, we get these phone calls that go on and WhatsApp messages, what about that temperature, what about this? And that's yeah. because people are actually enjoying what they do. And they care about fight the bit out at times, but. Yeah, yeah, we're all human. We're all human. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Bernard, you'd obviously designed a tap room ahead of licensing laws changing. <laughs> yes. And in the hopes that things do change. And look, at the minute, obviously, you have a little bit of storage going on in here, but this is beautiful. You know, what's the idea with this? Is this for tourism? Is this to support the local market? Or I think this is for tourism. For, and I mean, once uh, I mean, there are some changes to laws, then certainly we, we can maximize the potential of it. Yeah. But we did see uh, that. Tourism, and I mean, I'm you know, I can be focused on production, but Kerry is very active in the brewery. Kerry, as my wife, is very active in the brewery, and she's been very instrumental in getting this tap room the size that it is. Yeah, um, I may have kept it smaller and said, Listen, that we, when we're doing the build, let's make this a smaller, yeah. smaller gesture. But we're glad we did it like this, and now yeah. I, I could see the vision. Yeah. and then we got on board with uh, uh, with the meet the buyer events, and, and yeah. suddenly we had. From 2020, uh, from March to April, to March to May 2020, we had we had 2,000 people booked here to go through this. Yeah, that's, that's and good. That, got, that got knocked in the head completely. And now the first one that recommences back in March. You know, the North Coast has been has been the big area for tourism in Northern Ireland for a long time. I think tourism and I realise what uh, South Down, what the Mourns, this area has to offer. Yeah, I think it'll I think it'll pay dividends. You've been in this game a long time. 1995, 96, 96, 96, 96. Yeah. Um, you know, you've worked hard. Yeah. You can see the team have worked exceptionally hard. It's a credit to you and your wife and to Gavin, and yeah. you know, because Gavin's been here a very long time as well. Yes, um, any tips that you would give to people thinking of opening a brewery? I know it's a bit of a cliche to say the only way to, to make a small fortune in the brewery is start with a bigger fortune. Yeah. I think you have to be realistic of what you're going into these days. Yeah. Um, I'm not saying somebody's going to, not going to come along and take the world over. Every you know few years, a company shines. The brew dogs of the world come yeah. along from no place and take over. But I think everybody has to be realistic like what what they're doing, and keep it simple, keep it clean, keep it consistent. Yeah, I think that's that's everybody. This is the key word to all the brewers we're talking about: consistency. You know, yeah. um, con without consistency and quality, you're you're nowhere, in my opinion. You know, but um, we are just trying to get that message across to you guys that are watching these videos. But Part of why we're creating the videos so that you see the people behind the brand. So, um, like Whitewater, 
a number of years ago took an investment from a, a slightly bigger company and maybe yeah. some people would have looked at that as a negative and I want to highlight that that's not a negative and if I was given that opportunity I would have taken that opportunity. Um, has there been any look back in that where you've said to yourself you know that was the wrong thing or has that been a great thing for you because I didn't see a change in you if that's you know. Yeah. No I think from, from our perspective I think you have to get your product out onto, onto, onto the taps yeah. into, the, into the public and onto, onto bars from, from our perspective. Um, yes, we would do it again. Yeah. Um, and you have to, you know, you have to stand um, very much passionate about what you do here. And that's, I mean, we don't, we don't high gravity brew. We don't do anything different. We only use. You're fiercely you know, independent. Yeah, I would, I would absolutely. say that. You know, your husband yeah. and wife team, yeah. and that's why I want that message to get across there. And, yeah. and and I've only mentioned that because I think it's something people need to see. You know. You don't tie into the big chain buying patterns. You still work with independent people like Get A Brew. We highly value that. We want yeah. our customers to know that you're supporting local. And if it gets you access to some taps and stuff, that's a positive in our experience. You know, it's getting beer onto onto the uh, into into people's lips, and that's yeah. the hardest thing to do. And yes, there are you know different parts of the UK have different tradings, and there's always a large player in the market, no matter yeah. what you're going to be in. Several large players, but we do exactly the same thing we've been doing by the exact same way as we've been doing since 1996 yeah you know and, and we haven't we haven't changed anything since then we haven't yeah. and in recent years in the last three or four years since we built this here you know we've stuck our neck out and i think i think people have to be um take that chance and move on and, and that's great when i see people that are coming into the industry you know architects that are coming into the industry because you know people are, are saying i've got the day job and i'm now gonna i'm now gonna open up a brewery and people will say yeah, you know, how can they do that? Or, yeah, yeah. And it's great. It's great to see that. I, yeah. I, I mean, I, I like seeing people take a chance. We took a chance on something. Yeah. And uh, I would just say, if you've got a dream in a brewery, go for it. I, one thing I want to cover just before we finish, working with supermarkets. I got slated something shocking when I took our uh, previous brewery into supermarkets. The one thing I noticed was they pay bills on time, they order big volumes. They were paying the same price as we were given to the independents, but we got we were criticised for it. Do you find working with supermarkets a good thing? I think I do. Yeah, I mean you have to you have to work with everyone out there, yeah. and we've been through this situation ourselves with 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 uh, with with, the, with accounts telling us to take our beers out. Yeah. Um, because because we work with the supermarket, the same people don't you know they don't take a a vodka out or a well known Smirnoff out because they say that it's yeah. been sold in the supermarket. Yeah. But I think sometimes the smaller companies are maybe. Um, it's a misunderstanding, it's a, yeah, though, isn't it's it? An it's, it's, it's an easier hit. It's an easier one to, to do that. But you know, we've done it. Uh, you know, we've been approached by the supermarkets. We never really actively went looking for the supermarkets when we started. Yeah. You know, the very the first supermarket approached us, and then the second one approached us, and we said one of one of the, one of the largest in Northern Ireland said, "Just why did you not approach us?" Yeah. And the reason I sat with the buyer and said is because I think that. Uh, I've heard that you know your prices. You'll want you'll want a, a, a lower price. Yeah. And they said, "What's your price?" And I said, "That's our price." And we went into business. Your price is your price. Yeah. That's it. And we went with that. So it, it's it's uh, it, it's it's growing your business. Yeah. And you have to grow your business. Well, it, look, revenue is the lifeblood of the the business at the end of the day, and everybody needs a revenue. Like it's all great being passionate, and we are all passionate producers here. But the, I, the reason I'm making these videos is I'm I'm keen to promote Irish craft beer. I'm keen to promote my customers. Like there's an expense in this. This is you know we want people to see the people behind the game. Bernard's knocking his pan in here. His t his team are knocking their pan in here. They're investing. They're taking risks. Support your local breweries, guys. That's what we need. So, Bernard, just to thank you for your time today and to thank you for allowing us to, to have a look around your brewery. So. Absolutely, Johnny. And and as I say, uh, we're, we're you know with with yourself here, what you're doing here. It's, it's great to have that relationship as well. We can lift the phone and products are coming down the road from yeah. us and, and they're coming, you know, and sometimes we do run out because yeah. we're all running around and you know, you guys are turning around pretty quick for us. Yeah. Um, so it's a two way street here and we we're intend to continue this, this, uh, this relationship very much. So that's Whitewater Brewery. We hope you find that insightful and picked up a few tips and tricks from Bernard and his team here and let you see the people behind the brand. And why we do this, we want you to support our local breweries. So get out there and buy their beer. If you have any questions about Whitewater, drop them in the comments below. I'm sure the team here will be glad to help you out. Thanks so much for watching. Until next time, happy brewing.